All right, so the first step says to carefully and thoroughly clean a Erlenmeyer flask and place 30 milliliters of distilled water in it. So I'm gonna take my graduated cylinder and I'm going to pour some water in there, get it pretty close to the top. Fill this thing up to the 30 milliliter, 25 milliliter mark. And then I'm gonna take that and pour it in there. So to get the other five milliliters, I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pour five, pour in some. And I hit it right on the mark that time. So now I've got 30 milliliters of water in my Erlenmeyer flask. And now I'm gonna take a scoop of my unknown and I'm going to put that scoop in my Erlenmeyer flask. So here goes my scoop of unknown. And I am going to swirl this vigorously in a circular motion to dissolve the salt. All right, so here we are on step three. We're going to set up a Bunsen burner, ring stand, and wire gauze. So I've got my Bunsen burner. Here is my assembled ring stand. I'm gonna place that over the Bunsen burner. And there is my wire gauze pad. And that's gonna give me something to set my Erlenmeyer flask with my dissolved material in. And then I'm gonna light my Bunsen burner and I'm just going to make sure that that flame is at an appropriate height so that I don't end up overdoing it with the heat on the bottom of that. So you should monitor this so that you don't end up boiling off the liquid too quickly. You want to leave a few milliliters of water in the bottom. Otherwise, you're going to wind up with a bit of a residue that's difficult to clean up. So let this thing go for a bit and keep your eye on it just so you don't boil off all the liquid. All right, so I reached the end of uh, evaporating out most of the liquid and I poured in the extra eight milliliters. And now I'm gonna be pouring this into a Petri dish. This thing is super hot right now. So I need to let it cool a bit. A few moments later. But now I'm going to pour this into a petri dish so here i go and there it is in the petri dish and so now i'm going to perform a flame test with this and record my results in my data table so we'll do that in just a second all right so now i am soaking my wooden splint in the unknown solution there and I am going to do the flame test now. And we get a bright yellow flame out of this one. This one is compound A. All right, so here is substance B's flame test with that brilliant red flame. Here is substance C's flame test. We get that nice green. This is substance D. It's a little hard to tell in the video, but you're looking at a lavender kind of color there, like a light purple. And this is substance E. And we get another brilliant green there. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take what's left over in my Petri dish and I'm going to put it aside and let it dry so that we can take a look at the crystal shapes when we come back. The next day. This is substance A. Here is substance B. This is substance C.
This is substance D. Substance E.